Hello viewers, today we're going to address a very big one. It is Great Britain versus the United States of America. Now there are lots of ways we could compare these two great nations. We could look at pop music, aviation history, um, greatest poets, all that sort of thing, but we decided to narrow it down. We're going to make the arena for this duel the bug out bunker kitchen. And the weapon is the sausage. This is very important. Which of these two great nations can turn the sausage into the most effective, portable, non-cutlery dependent, nutritious snack? Now America, of course, gives us the hot dog. Big, full of confidence, optimistic, brightly colored mustard and ketchup on the top. Britain gives us the sausage sandwich in soft council bread with brown sauce. It sounds like a bit of a no-brainer, but is it? Let's find out as we have, what should we call it? Sausage off. Sausage off. Right, this sausage I took from the Magic Fridge. By the way, the Magic Fridge is still very much in existence. It didn't really go in a skip. That was Lucy being funny with Photoshop. It's been here all the time, still functioning, still full of any food that you can think of or mention or request. That is a British banger. The British banger is going up against the American hot dog sausage, which I suspect, although I haven't researched this thoroughly because sausage history is complicated, owes something to Germany or possibly Poland. Anyway, the American hot dog sausage is a, like a, is it a Wiener, a Wiener? Is it a Savaloy? It's one of those sort of Blutz type sausages and you boil it in water. The British sausage is something you fry in a pan. There, so to start with, we will, Take a, take a pan, which I should have done really before we started, put it on there, turn it up. I've got some preheated water in here, some pre-fried water. The sausage should be heated in water, but apparently not boiled. Now, if you're American and watching this, I know you will say, well, what do you mean by an American hot dog? Because the Americans are quite chauvinistic about their hot dogs. They are different in different states. They have different ideas. I mean, some put Philly cheese on, some put sauerkraut on. I'm basing this really on my memory of eating hot dogs in California, specifically in the Bay Area, uh, where they're quite simple. They're really just um, a, a sausage in a roll. You have some rolls down here, and you put mustard and ketchup on them with a little bit of fried onion. Here is a suitably big roll. The important thing about an American hot dog is that the sausage is slightly longer than the roll. It must stick out of the ends a little bit because that speaks volumes about your country's aspirations. You know, you've got so much sausage, it hangs out of the end of the bread. In austere Britain, the sausage hides in the bread. You're lucky that the sausage is in there. Ostensibly, you're just getting two pieces of bread. But you know what? There's a bit of sausage in there. Not so the Americans. Look at the goddamn sausage! Bit of bread as well, if you fancy it. Right, shut up, James. I need another sausage and I need some onion. Sorry, I, I kicked one of the orange vodka bar mood lighting strips then, I hope. Another sausage, O'Nion. I have handled some meat. I have a handy white bread. I know everybody gets very worked up about this sort of thing, honestly. Won't do you any harm. Right, let's extract. Look at that. Oh, it's huge. Oh, it's so big it doesn't actually fit in the pan. There you go, that needs to be boiled for, it says on the jar, about seven minutes. Oh, not boiled, heated, heated in water. It's just, just below simmering. You won't notice, as I've put that in too early. Doesn't really matter, if I turn the heat down, it can just stay warm. Let's put this on fry. I'm gonna go with sunflower oil because that's what we've got. Don't need a huge amount because of course these, these are classic British bangers indeterminate sausages, they, they're quite fatty anyway. We need a big knife. We need the British bread. Here we go. Other breads are available, but not really for this sort of thing. This is soft white government issue, approved by King Charles bread. Uh, it's white, it's hideously white, it's soft. The impressions of your fingers stay in it for a few seconds. That's the sign that it's the stuff you want. What am I going to need for this bread in a minute? Everybody? Packed, Invented in? 1901. Was it 01 or 03? It's 01 on the fridge. 
1901 it is. That's the big lie theory that has now become a fact. It's not actually true that Lurpak spreadable butter was invented in 1901. The Lurpak logo was invented in 1901. The spreadable version, I think, was invented in, I think it was actually invented in Spain. In, oh dear. Might have been the late 50s or possibly, I've got an error message on my cooker. What does that mean, apart from that we're very much in the modern world? Yowzers. Okay, American um, bread ready. We don't have any butter on that. I wonder if there is any Lurpak spreadable butter invented in 1901 in the fridge. Yes, there is. This is now worth something like 200 pounds, apparently, because of the cost of living crisis. So we better only put it on one piece of bread, not both. Would you like me to use the Lurpak and then put that back on? Because I know that annoys everybody. Right, I'll do that. What happened to all the cutlery, Lucy? Can I use that? There you are, 30 quid's worth of Lurpak going onto one slice of that piece of bread. Oh, I've slightly overdone that, I think I'll put a bit back. Make sure that lines up with that, okay? Important. We're going to need, for the British sausage sandwich, of course, Houses of Parliament brown sauce. You can speed that bit up and put a silly noise on it. For the uh, American hot dog, we are going to need Heinz tomato ketchup. And then most importantly, and the, the relevance of this will become very apparent later on in the film, French's classic mustard. American mustard, no American hot dog or indeed cheeseburger is complete without this stuff. Anything without this is effectively an act of treason. That is getting too hot. You could say that was boiling, but we'll edit round that. So all that remains to do now is wait for a bit until the snorkers are cooked through and then I'll sort of spatchcock them and spread them out a bit so that they fill the sandwich more completely, giving the impression of abundance, which isn't really there. Does that make sense? Well, what do you think? What's the picture I just there? Thought, I know, I just thought that. What's, thing what's the, that? What's that? Exactly. Well, it's well, it's part of the Houses of Parliament. I've never put two and two together. It's not really upside down, Lucy. It's actually that way up if you go down to the embankment and look at it. I thought HP was the brand. It is. But it stands for Houses of Parliament. It was allegedly, I think, designed for fat MPs to put on their sausage sandwiches probably. I don't know, it's not owned by the government, it's owned by HP. Made in uh, HP Foods London SE1. UK Care Line, that's for if you've been affected by any of these issues regarding brown sauce, you can ring, ring the brown sauce UK Care Line. Who's going to test these hot dogs, sausage sandwiches? Oh, I haven't done the onions, have I? Lucy Brown. Uh, I thought you didn't like mustard. You don't like HP sauce? No. You don't like mustard? No. And you lived in France? Yeah. You don't like cheese? No. You don't like wine? No. You don't like mustard? No. What, what other things that the French use a lot? Do you not like butter? No, I like that. You do like butter? Yeah. Garlic? Yeah. Cream? Yeah. Yep. Right, we only need a tiny bit of onion for our hot dog. Don't want to overdo it, because that would be un-American. <laughs> if you buy a, a UK fairground, hot dog. The onion is often in strips and has been cooked for a very long time, caramelized, gone brown and, and very soft and floppy. The ones I've had in America, when they have onion in them, which isn't always, it's tended to be um, heated, but still quite crisp. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm doing. I've actually made a mistake because I've cut the bread roll entirely in half, haven't I? And I should have actually cut it three quarters of the way through. Shall I do another one? I would cut it through the top. What, that way? I think you might be right, Lucy Brown, now you, now you mentioned it. I wasn't really thinking, but you reckon cut it three quarters of the way through that way? Yeah. And then slot the saucy in it. So, like that. Yeah, okay, because we don't need to put any Lurpak spreadable butter in there, because, because you wouldn't. Next thing I'm going to do is attempt to find a fork. But there is one. We'll take these sausages out. And you'll find a... I know I should do this on a separate board, but I haven't got one. A lot, of, a lot of cafes in, in Britain, if you buy a sausage sandwich, they would have cut the sausages in half and then cooked them from the inside as well, thus. So we'll do that. It also makes them, as I said, look, look bigger than they are. 
It's a way of beating rationing. These are very, very soft sausages. Now the knife is sharp, I've sharpened it, but the sausages are very crummy. It doesn't really matter because the thing about the American hot dog is there's a presentational element to the sausage. The sausage is a proclamation because you can see it in the British sausage sandwich, the sausage is hidden. It's modest, it's slightly embarrassed. I should wipe that, shouldn't I? Yeah, I think that sausage is cookhead. No red, no pink, no bloodiness. Let's arrange it on the Lurpak side of the sandwich. In a, in a way, I'm cheating slightly here because those sausages will be slightly infused with onion. Spread dowdy brown sauce by appointment to His Majesty the King, I think, on there. That's not quite enough, is it? Right, there's our British Cafe sausage sandwich. That can go off for now. That can go off. We will take our hot dog roll, a little bit of fried onion in the bottom. This is how I remember it. The, the really exciting bit's coming up. Take out our great sauce big... First. Hmm? Sauce first, no? Bollocks. Okay. Goes on the top. Anybody disagree? I agree with you. Agree with you. Yeah. Lucy is wrong. And, as I promised, look, the sausage just sticks out of the end of the bun. This, look, this is great, isn't it? What I remember, because it's a long time since I've been to a bonfire night, that's got sausages and, and hot dogs, but they're usually made with those sort of bangers in a modest bread roll, which I happen to have actually. That sort of very basic, small, unambitious bread roll. Now the, the trick here, the Americans have, dis oh, this sort of works. They have a nice little pointy nozzle dispenser. So you get a neat, a neat line of ketchup, which I've sort of achieved. Here we go, you ready? Can you see this cameras? Oh, look at that. There you go. American hot dog, British sausage sandwich. In which direction would you like to cut Lucy Brown? Rectangular. Well, so you didn't really mean that, did you? But so they're perpendicular to the direction of the sausages. That was bad. That's nowhere near the middle. But look, my fingerprints are in the bread. That's the sign that it's proper government issue bread. Lucy Brown, off you go. Which one am I trying first? Mm, it's entirely up to you. It will be quite hot. It's massive. It's meant to be massive. It's American. Uh, put a lot of mustard on it. Yep. American mustard is not particularly strong. It's not like putting Coleman's on it, which would be quite hot. American mustard is, is quite gentle. Okay, this is the only one that exists. This is the only, this is the only mustard that's legal in America. And it's French's. It's French's, but don't, don't, don't be confused by that. That was simply somebody's name. It's American mustard and it's excellent. Mm. That's really good. It's not bad, is it? I can tell it's nice. I haven't bitten it. I'm looking at, well, eat it all. Let's try that one. Mm. I really don't like the HP. Right. So hot dog is so much better for me. Okay. So much. What do you think? Well, I, I don't need to, I know. I know it's the American hot dog. America is victorious in this competition, not in others necessarily. That's not definitive. I'm not saying that's the end of the debate. It's the end of this part of the debate. It's not the end. It's not even the beginning of the end, but it is the end of the beginning. There's a reason why I've mentioned all this, why I've been cooking hot dogs and proclaiming the greatness of American French's yellow mustard, is because it was the inspiration for something very important that is coming to your shores, Americans, very soon, depending on when this video goes out. And it is, Magic Hand comes in with a bottle of the new James Gin American Mustard. A whole new gin inspired by and based on the flavor of American mustard, which is available now. Link in the description. Hello viewers, specifically viewers in America, and I'm afraid it's bad news. In our last video, we trumpeted with a lot of playing of the American national anthem, our new James Gin American mustard, the spirit of America, made with the very mustard that defines your cheeseburgers and hot dogs, and therefore defines America to the rest of the world. 
Unfortunately, we've since come up against the Alcohol and Tobacco Tax Bureau who have said that we can't call our gin American Mustard because it's a bottle of gin, not a mustard, and people could be confused. So, exclusively for you Americans, not for the rest of the world where it doesn't matter, we have renamed it American Ramstud. Ramstud being an anagram of mustard. See what we did there. The gin is exactly the same. It's still made with the very mustard that inspires and enlivens your burgers and hot dogs, but it's now called Ramstud. And that's not a bad name, actually, if you think about it, because if you want to say to your friends, I've got me a bottle of Ramstud, yeah. Thank you for watching, like, comment, subscribe.